We have the impossible to find roof rack installed on the JL. Good morning, guys. We are back here at Epic Adventure Outfitters. Look what we brought over. We brought the roof rack. We're gonna be doing the install today. We kind of jury rigged this setup on the back of Dustin's Gladiator because the, the roof rack is really long. And uh, well, we couldn't put it on top of the JL to get it over here because, well, the soft top. So Dustin put together this nice little rack with some two by fours, strapped her down, and we made the trip across on the ferry this morning. And we're gonna get our install going here in a few. Looks like we got another gladiator sitting out front. This blue looks really good. Hydro blue, that looks good. This isn't yours, is it? Yeah, sure, we're gonna have two <laughs> giant gorilla blue eco diesel gladiators. Well, I was kind of wondering when I pulled up, I was like, that doesn't make any sense. You guys remember Christian uh, <laughs> here at Epic Adventure Outfitters, he's gonna be helping us today. Graciously offering up the shop on this rainy Sunday morning. Got out of bed early. Not as early as us though, we were up at like 5.30, so. No, 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 no. <laughs> Although Sean texted me at like 6.30 in the morning with no. an idea for the side of my Jeep. Something about a dolphin non, called non Echo. does not get up till like 11. Well, I think he went back to bed after he uh, let I me know his idea. Is that the story till now? Oh yeah! Look at this! <laughs> We got all the parts taken off, uh, or unboxed, not unboxed, unwrapped from the tons of plastic wrap. We've got the, the actual rack itself. Leaning against the table is the front bar, which you can mount some lights and stuff to. And then we've got the rear supports, and I think this is a passenger side ladder. I'm not, I can't remember exactly which one it is, so. So I do want to get uh, two ladders for this. I want to get the ladder for the other side eventually. I think it'll just look good but we've got one ladder to start and the rack and that'll get us going for today and uh, chef John's rooftop tent is hanging out up there and I was kind of wondering maybe we can just borrow it for a little bit to test drive this rack and maybe go do some camping and overlanding we'll see how it goes and see how far we get in this today but that'd be a lot of fun to try out a rooftop tent. That one's made by Free Spirit Recreation. It's a hard shell, low profile tent, really cool. So he's looking forward to getting it on to his Forerunner, but he's not here right now to stop me. So maybe we'll borrow it. What are you doing to my Jeep? I just fixed that fender. I don't think you understand what the word fix means. <laughs> When you fix it, you're supposed to actually attach the, the parts again, not just Look, hold them up against the truck. I was here for two minutes and Christian just rips my fender off. <laughs> I'll, I'll get the other one. Oh, what's going on? It's already rusted. Oh, God. <laughs> Here's the actual con on Paul's Gladiator if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, you can get these shirts at dirtyanddangerous.com. We still have a few available. They're awesome. This is such a sweet graphic and I can't see, wait to see what Sean's gonna do on his rig. So in case you guys didn't know, Sean has a sweet graphic coming to the side of his Gladiator pretty soon. You'll have to stay tuned for the reveal. We have shown some sneak peeks on Flex Friday Live a couple times. It's gonna be just as awesome as the giant con on the side of Paul's Gladiator. This is Paul's old Gladiator which was just recently purchased by another YouTube channel here in Vancouver. Well, I was gonna say Victoria. <laughs> in Vancouver, Unwinding Roads, go check them out. Uh, they've been shooting a couple of videos with Sean uh, over at the Story Till Now, and uh, we'll probably see them on the channel here sometime in the near future, but Paul's old gladiator went to a great home. Nice. So. Yeah, but it's a nice setup. The, the bracket's beautiful from Front Runner, and then essentially, like, it's a good, solid, I've had my sleeping bag and a bunch of pillows and stuff up, up inside there and it yeah. hasn't gotten wet in about three weeks. Right? That's, so and it looks good dry. too, but that's got a ton of room. Do you got anything in there? Can we have a look? Yeah, definitely. Let me pop it. Yeah, this is the same one I want to get for on top of mine. There's one more on the side there, on that side. Sweet. Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah, it's got the nice little drawstrings there. Just get a little cargo in there. Yeah. Keeps the it from right. flipping all the way open. Nice yeah. and watertight. Said yeah. nothing's gotten wet while well, you get your sleeping bag in here. So. Yeah. yeah, no, nothing gets wet. It's got a good seal in here. Yeah. Yeah, I cleaned the seal a little bit, but yeah. So, so this is, uh, Pelican's got a new line of cargo cases that I was checking out, and uh, seems like Paul's 
managed to acquire one before me, and these are <laughs> awesome looking. Really great cargo system with a modular quick release. And, uh, you know, Sean's got to get in here too, so. Yeah, let me get <laughs> you need the bigger one, man. Oh, suffocation risk. Suffocation, don't go in. I don't know. I think one of these would probably work really well in the back of the JL uh, to carry some cargo above my Tuffy security deck. So we'll see what's coming up in the future. Sweet. So we were just taking a look at all the pieces that kind of need to go on and where they need to go. And we've got these clamp brackets that go onto the pinch seam. Yes, our hand model. And uh, so it looks like we're going to have to take the worn bumper or the shell off. It's not the entire carrier because the carrier is bolted onto the frame rail, but this shell is bolted on as well, but it does come off. So we're going to have to take those bolts off. But essentially this bracket slides in between the bumper and the body and acts as our rear support for the... And I'm betting thing. we're going to have to grind a bit off here because the distance here and there is almost identical you have to give it the old massage so we're gonna be, otherwise you're gonna have this crazy squeaking noise <laughs> we don't want no squeaking noise and we don't want to hear it so yeah. so i think uh christian is going to give me the angle grinder and that's probably going to be my job <laughs> so it's been uh it's been two hours to get the rear bumper off which uh the worn one just has some really awkward bolts to get at and we think it will be fairly clear sailing from here. We're just pre-mounting a couple of these uh, brackets on and figuring out how some of these weird connector bits go on underneath. And I think I'm probably gonna have to do a bit of grinding on the bumper just to make a bit more of a gap for the bracket. You can see the bracket connects to the pinch seam here and it's a little bit thick for how close the bumper is to this as well. So if we have to, we'll just make a little notch and away we go. But first we need, uh, we need some more donuts. You should definitely. All right, so Christian just marked off the bumper here that we need to shave down. Probably uh, a little over a quarter of an inch. And that's gonna allow us to clear the extra metal now that we have bolted on to the, onto the pinch seam of the body because this is quite thick. And we've got to shave this off. So we put some clear protective film on and uh, completely missed. Is that right? <laughs> missed the mark. So while I was uh, just grinding out the rest of that bumper, uh, Christian and Dustin were getting the cowl mounts put on. So there's a couple mounts that go underneath the cowl and uh, one onto the door hinge, is that right Christian? Yep, one on the inside of the door hinge. There's not really much structural to hook onto uh, under the cowl, so they do utilize some of the door hinge. Just holding plastic brackets. Yeah, exactly. But there you go. Oh, we're gonna have to get a, uh, we're gonna have to get a new sticker here though, because this is now, it says uh, YouTube. So start Forgot to film just uh, moving the rack up onto the top of the roof. Basically just took a couple of us putting it over top of our head. Good shoulder press. Uh, but we bolted it down. There's a series of bolts that connect it to these rods here and some bushings that we connected it to these mounts we added on earlier on in the video. And we're just trying to figure out what to do with these because there's a couple stabilizers here for the hard top. Um, obviously, we're not going to need these for the soft top, so I think we'll take these off. And it does, there's just a little bit of rattle, or not rattle, but a little bit of shake that these would eliminate with the hard top. So we'll see how it goes with the soft top. But there are some stabilizers down here on the rear quarter panel. And other than that, I think it looks really good. So let's get this outside in a few minutes. We're just going to finish cleaning up. And we've got to get the uh, rear bumper put back on. And then we'll get it outside, and I'll show you guys what the entire Jeep looks like.
strive to give you a few initial thoughts before we take it out off-roading and on the trail. I do notice some more wind noise coming from the top, obviously, but I don't have that wind deflector on the roof yet. So I think that will cut down on that. There is a bit of flapping with the soft top hitting the roof rack. I don't have the soft top like anti-flap kit or whatever it is that Gobi makes. So I think I'll get that to go across that middle bar to try to cut down on some of that. But honestly, nothing is really bothering me too much. Um, and if you listen to music or have loud mud train tires, it's not gonna make much difference anyways. So I don't really feel the w extra weight on the Jeep. It feels pretty good. One thing that I did notice driving is that you don't even notice the roof rack looking out the front window. It lines up really well and cleanly with the A-pillars and doesn't obstruct your view at all. So just a couple quick first drive thoughts, obviously not a full review. I will talk more about the rack as we hit the trails and go on some adventures because I do want to see how it responds to more weight and obviously rougher terrain. A couple more little things to go on still. We've got to put the front wind deflector on and the rear ladder. I've got to get back to Victoria today and we're going to be coming back and throwing that Free Spirit Recreation rooftop tent on, well, that belongs to John, and taking this on a overlanding camping test drive to see, well, does it rattle? How does it handle weight on the top? So far, it looks pretty good. It's pretty stable. I definitely think it's more stable if you have a hard top and you can put those additional supports on. If you're wondering just how tall the Jeep is now, it is six foot 11. So it's just under seven feet with the 37 inch tires on there and the roof rack and my three and a half inch lift with the eco diesel and a bunch of my tools. We're gonna take this over to Sean's house, the story till now. I gotta drop it off because I'm gonna be coming back in a couple days, picking it up and we're gonna be going on that adventure. So don't miss the first overlanding trip with a rooftop tent and rack next week on the next video. Huge, huge thanks to Christian and Paul at Epic Adventure Outfitters. Make sure you go check out their YouTube channel as well down in the description below. They've got a cool new rig coming to their channel soon. I'm not gonna tell you what it is, so go over and check it out. Give them a subscribe, watch some of their videos, really awesome content, and a huge, huge thanks to my good friend Dustin, Island Gladiator, for bringing over the rack today. Hit that subscribe button, leave a like if you enjoyed this video, share it with friends, and I'll see you guys next week.